Greetings, hallowed members of the Final Fantasy Union. Welcome to 2021. Now, throughout last year, there was a 30-day video game music challenge that was doing the rounds, and after watching GameSack's list, we felt compelled to do something similar. And so, we'd like to introduce the 30-day Final Fantasy Music Challenge. Now, you're supposed to pick a piece of music each day that meets the criteria, but we're going to be doing this right now in one video. And we're going to be doing the hard mode variant, which means only picking one piece of music per game, with DLC and remakes being treated as separate entities if they featured different music. What you're about to hear are my picks, but you can find out Lauren's by following her on Twitter at LevelUpLauren. There's also a link in the description if you'd like to download the sheet and do it yourself on social media, and we'd encourage you to challenge your friends too. On that note, we'd like to nominate some of our friends to take the challenge. So, Alex McCullough, The Night Sky Prince, Final Fantasy Peasant, and The Sphere Hunter. We can't wait to see your picks. Alright, that's enough preamble from me. Onto the list, and what better place to start than with Best Prelude. There have been a lot of prelude variants over the years, but I'm going with the version that appeared in Final Fantasy IV. This was the first to add more layers, including a melody, and almost every prelude that has been created since has used this version as its inspiration. On to day 2, Chocobo theme. This has again been iterated upon a ridiculous number of times, but one that stood out to me more than most was the version that appeared as one of Final Fantasy Type Zero's world map themes. Okay, day 3 is Moogle theme, as you can't have one mascot without the other. My favourite version again though, doesn't come from a mainline game, and it instead appeared in Crystal Chronicles, where it accompanied the adorable male Moogle. Now it's time for day 4, airship theme. For this I've picked Flying the Enterprise, but instead of going for the original NES version, I've opted for the version from the DS remake. Alright, next we have Day 5, Character Theme. There have been plenty of classics over the years, but I'm going to go for one that's much more recent, Ignis' theme from Final Fantasy XV Episode Ignis. Okay, day 6, Town Theme. 
Although they aren't as popular in the more modern experiences, older games always had themes that were associated with specific locations or types of locations, and one of the most memorable for me is Town from Final Fantasy II, specifically the Origins version. Day 7, Overworld theme. For me, the main theme of Final Fantasy VII is one of the best around, and I'm going to be a little hipster here and choose the PC version as opposed to the PlayStation version. What you're about to hear is being played on the Yamaha MU90. Okay, we're on to day 8 now, and that's Dungeon Theme. One of the best was one of the first, the Chaos Shrine from Final Fantasy 1. I'm going to go for the Origins version again though, as Uematsu rearranged his own composition to add a lot more depth than was possible with the original. Alright, day 9, battle theme. This was very hard to narrow down, but I've decided to go a bit unorthodox by picking Battle 1 from Final Fantasy VI, Advance. It's similar to the SNES version, but features a different sound set that makes it more punchy. Day 10, boss theme. Another tough pick, as there are so many great options, but my pick is going to be Hellfire from Final Fantasy XV, as it evolves with the fight and has some fantastic transitions to accompany the various segments. Day 11, Victory Fanfare. This is always a welcome arrival after the completion of a tough encounter, but the most majestic version, in my opinion at least, has to be a Victory Fanfare Reborn, from Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. Day 12, End Boss Theme. As the franchise has evolved, End Boss Themes have become some of the most iconic pieces of battle music, and I've decided to go for Final Fantasy VIII as my pick in this category.
Day 13 is Ending Theme. These tracks often represent everything you've just been through, and one of the best is Fulfilled Desire from Crisis Core. Not only does it feature fully orchestrated versions of the various themes heard throughout the game, but it features awesome arrangements of original Final Fantasy VII pieces too. Day 14, minigame theme. Now we're talking. There are a whole host of minigames to choose from, but you just can't beat Vamo a la Flamenco from Final Fantasy IX. Day 15 is in-game arrangements. With so many tribute games and remasters, rearrangements are a dime a dozen, and I've gone for Home Away From Home from the Final Fantasy VII Remake. This was a near perfect arrangement of holding my thoughts in my heart from the original game, and it stuck with me as one of the most memorable tracks in the remake. Alright, day 16, Piano Arrangement. For this, I'm going to pick Eternity from the Final Fantasy X-2 Piano Collections. This made a great piece even better, especially as it built up towards the end. Day 17 is Remastered Music. Now I know the Final Fantasy X HD Remastered soundtrack doesn't have the best of reputations as there were some dubious choices, but People of the North is as close to perfection as you're going to get. Moving on to day 18, it's orchestration. So basically any time an orchestra has been used to enhance the music in game or otherwise. For this, I'm actually going to pick Rebel Army theme from what I believe is the first orchestration, Final Fantasy Symphonic Suite. Day 19 is non-Uematsu music because, well, it's nice to recognise some of the other talented individuals who have worked on the soundtracks over the years. And for my pick, I'm going to go with Destiny from Final Fantasy XII.
Okay, day 20. Music from a game you haven't played. Due to when it came out, Final Fantasy USA, aka Mystic Quest, is a game I've never had the chance to play. But I have had the chance to listen to some of its awesome music, and this track is pretty special. Alright, day 21, music from a game only released on one system. As there have been so many re-releases and remasters, I've actually chosen to be a little sly here and pick a piece from Bravely Default as it's a close cousin, I hope you all don't mind. Day 22 is music from a game you don't like. Now, I tried to keep an open mind about most things concerning the franchise, but one game was probably harder to do that with than most, and that was Final Fantasy XIV version 1.0. But even if the gameplay was pretty convoluted, it featured some amazing pieces of music, like this one. Day 23 is a piece of music that makes you feel nostalgic. There are so many pieces of music that could tick this box, but Final Fantasy XI will always hold a special place in my heart, and its opening theme was Uematsu and Shiro Hamaguchi at their collaborative finest. Day 24, music that makes you feel sad. There are plenty of pieces of music that have brought me to tears, but nothing makes me feel quite as sad as this piece from Final Fantasy Tactics. If you've recovered, Day 25 is music that makes you feel pumped. 
And as I was playing World of Final Fantasy, nothing got me more pumped than this arrangement of a classic from Final Fantasy IX. Now, after that, Day 26 is music that makes you feel relaxed. There is an endless supply of relaxing Final Fantasy music, and there's even a playlist on YouTube that's almost 10 hours long. For my pick, I've chosen something from the original Dissidia. We're almost at the end now, day 27, music from a mobile exclusive. Brave Exvius is an incredibly popular and profitable title for Square Enix, and it features some fantastic music to support its constant supply of content, like this one. Day 28 is music from a handheld exclusive. For this, I've chosen a piece of music from Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, and what's cool about it is that the soundtrack featured two versions, one using the Game Boy Advance sound chip and one using orchestral samples. Day 29 is a piece of music that you feel is underrated. This was actually quite difficult to choose as Final Fantasy features such strong music, but one game that deserves a lot more love is Final Fantasy XIII 2, specifically its villain, Caius. And his theme, in my opinion at least, is one of the best themes of any villain in the franchise. Alright, here we are, day 30, a piece of music with special meaning. For that reason, I'm going to flout the no game twice rule, and that's because I've chosen to pick The Landing from Final Fantasy VIII. It was a piece of music that drew me in, compelling me to self-teach myself the piano so that I could learn how to play it. That then led to me gaining a keener interest in music, and as part of my desire to speak to people, I joined my first Final Fantasy community, called Final Fantasy Music Online. 
The rest of my life has unfolded around that decision, from my career to my family. So had I not heard this piece of music, who knows where I'd be now? So there you go, that was my 30 day Final Fantasy music challenge on hard mode. What would you choose for each of the 30 different categories? Let me know in the comments and be sure to at us on Twitter if you choose to do the list there. For now though, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the list, be sure to like the video and make sure you subscribe as we have plenty of awesome content lined up for this year. Alright guys, this is Daryl signing out, I hope to see you all again soon for more Final Fantasy goodness.